Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 1.3. We're going to talk about isotopic notation, average atomic mass, cations, not cations, cations, and anions, like the big fat cat sitting in front of your house. Get a calculator and a periodic table, and let's go through it. PT is periodic table, should be able to get one, you've got that science notebook too that'll have it. Let's hop to it. What does this mean? Okay, this top number is the mass of this one atom. The mass is found by protons plus neutrons. This is the symbol, duh. This is the atomic number. That's also the number of protons. That's always the number of protons. Now, some people think it's always the number of electrons, too, and it's not. There is a missing thing up here, and that's the charge. So if the charge was like minus 2, what that would mean is that it has two more electrons than protons. So if it has two more electrons than protons, this would be 16 protons and 18 electrons. But if it was plus 2, then 16 protons, that means I would have more protons than electrons. So I would have 14 protons. So S plus 2 equals 14 electrons. And S minus 2 would equal 18 electrons. So you know protons are positive, electrons are negative, And you can figure it out from there. On the periodic table, it looks like this. Notice the whole number goes in the bottom. It's not always on the top. But the whole number goes in the bottom. And this number with a decimal, we just kind of ignore it for a while. Cations and anions. Cations are positive ions. Now the way I remember this is I think of cats. Remember we've got our little cats. There's his little snout, his little nose. One of there. Cats have paws. Right? So cats are positive. Look at that positive. <laughs> Isn't that clever? So it's a positive ion and an anion is a negative ion. I guess sorry, negative, see all because of dash. Cat ions are positive and anions are negative. Protons never, ever, 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 ever change. How many protons, neutrons, electrons are in? So what I'm going to do first is throw these guys into isotopic notation to make our lives a little easier, too. Um, whoops. So I did not get out my periodic table, so if you were as cool as me, you would have the periodic table app, which I do. So chromium 52. So this number 52 tells me the mass. So chromium, I look on the periodic table, its symbol is CR. That dash part, notice goes on top, is 52. And chromium's bottom number is 24. Protons equal 24. Neutrons equal, remember neutrons, mass is protons. I'm sorry, mass is protons plus neutrons. So this is my mass. This is my proton, so 52 minus 24. I want a little more space here. 52 minus 24 is 48, 28. And then my electrons, notice there's nothing telling us the charge here. So that would be the same. Protons and electrons are changed with no charge. Oxygen is number 15. Oxygen symbol is O. This 15, remember, is the top number. That's the mass. If I look on the periodic table, the whole number that tells me the protons is 8. Protons equals 8. Neutrons equals 15 minus 8. And electrons equals, notice this is nothing telling me the charge is any different, equals 8. That's not a negative. I'm sorry, I put a dash there. Neon. Look on the periodic table, the amount symbol is NE. Remember that dash number is the mass, which is 20. And its number of protons, the whole number, is 10. Potassium ion. Now I need to give you a little more than that, um, but it's potassium plus one ion. Potassium symbol is cray, cray. It's potassium's K. Since it's the potassium plus one ion, its mass is still 40. Its number of protons is still the same from the periodic table, which is 19. Now its electrons are going to be different. Protons equals 19. Neutrons equals 40 minus 19. 
and the electrons, if it's plus one, I have more protons than electrons, so electrons would be 18. Chloride, the ide, and later on we'll learn that chloride means that it's got a negative charge on it, okay? In this case, it's negative one. So this dash tells me the mass is 36. Chloride, the same number of proteins as chlorine, periodic table, 17. And if you didn't get out a periodic table and look at those, do so now. I'm serious. Go get it. I'm not joking. Really? Go, Anthony, go get it. I'm telling you right now. Don't wait. Okay. So my protons are 17, bottom number. My neutrons are 36 minus 17, so it's 29, 19. And my electrons, if it's minus 1, I have more electrons than protons by 1. There's 18. Ding. Um, and these, I just did this and converted this, so I don't think we need to do this again. Um, and I think we've done enough of them. By the way, we don't need a bottom number if I just said it's helium-6. Because when you look on the peri periodic table, you look at helium and the number of uh, protons from the periodic table is there. So you don't need it. You should be able to find that on your own. Saving a little time for us. If no indication of charge is made, the substance is a neutral atom. That means protons equals electrons. That's normally the case. Where does the mass come from? The mass in the periodic table come from. Okay. Now, there's that decimal number we've ignored so far. And we're going to get to how we use that. Scientists chose carbon-12. Every living thing has carbon in it. 12 is the most common isotope the, of carbon. To have a mass of 12.000000, and that's repeating. They get, this gave us the mass of a neutron and a proton. They are close, but not identical. We average every atom of each isotope to get the average mass. And really, we take big samples to go through, if that's okay. To make life easy, we say a proton and neutron weigh one atomic mass unit. Now notice how they're close but not identical. This says identical enough for me. There are three isotopes of hydrogen. Hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, hydrogen 3. What is the average mass of hydrogen? It is not 2 because 99 percent of hydrogen is hydrogen 1 and like 0.7 percent is hydrogen 2 and 0.3 percent is hydrogen 3. I made up those numbers but the idea works. So the average is really, 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 really close to 1, because almost all of them are hydrogen 1. So how many carbon atoms weigh 12.01? That would be none. If I told you the average grade in the class was 94.72834.59, um, that's nobody. Nobody has that average of 92.83471. Even the most average person that there is, the person that you know, it's like you want to picture your average Joe. Well, that would be it. Like Austin. Austin is as average as they come. Austin does not have that average number. So how likely it is if I grab one boron atom that will weigh 10.8? 0%. The average is not the mass of any one isotope. Naturally occurring europium consists of two isotopes of the mass of blah and blah. Um, these are the abundances. What is the average atomic mass? So do you notice this has a bigger percentage? So the average mass should be a whisker closer to 153 than it is to 152. So let me show you how to actually calculate that. Percentage 1 times mass 1 equals some number. And percentage 2 times mass 2 equals some other number. And then you add those together. Okay. My little hillbilly school taught me never use the whole percentage thing, use the decimal form. So I'm going to start with that percentage of 0.4803 times 151 mm -hmm. equals 0.4803 times 151 equals 72.525 and then 0.5197 times 153 0.5197 times 153 is 79.5141. And then I add those together, and that'll be the average mass. So 79.5141 plus 72.525 is 152.04. So it's a little bit closer to 153 because those percentages are close. Now looking at this, do you see how magnesium 24 has a much higher abundance? than the other ones. So my answer should be closer to 24 than to 26.
Okay, another way of presenting the data. So this gave me the relative abundance already in the decimal percentage form, so I'm going to do that. 0 0.7870. The mass is 23.985. The 0 0.1013. 24.985. Nine eight six. Now, in this case, notice I did one and two. This one has three isotopes, so you just have a third one to do. Don't worry, you have a calculator. You get to use your calculator. It's your friend. So, friend, tell me all these masses. 0 0.787 times twenty-three point nine eight five is eighteen point eight seven six. Point one zero oh one three times 24.986 is 2.5311.1117 times 25.983 equals 2.902. I'm going to add all those together. <gasps> Uh-oh. I keep hitting my parentheses button instead of my 18.8. Eight, 7, 6. Add all those together and I get 24.309 AMU. Now this, believe it or not, is the same thing you do. It's like, what do I need in my final exam? Because your final exam is weighted, 80% is your coursework and 20% is your final. Right? So if it's whatever, 4 times what I want, times 5 times what I get, and you're trying to figure out this answer right here. Review! Woohoo! We are finished! Ice topic notation. Um, Hi. And standard notation can tell you the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Isotopic notation is the one that looks like this. You know, 111 over 17. And standard notation would be axiom dash 111. Average masses include the abundance of the elements. That's the percentage that it's there. And this podcast includes me saying toodles. <laughs>